Mechanical engineering is one of the broadest engineering disciplines. A typical four-year mechanical engineering curriculum includes statics, dynamics, mechanics of materials, fluids, and thermodynamics, heat transfer, vibrations, machine design, manufacturing, and more. In each class, you learn different equations, solve different types of problems, and are taught to treat each subject as its own discipline. In this video, we're going to cover five ideas or concepts that are not tied to any one class, but cover 99% of mechanical engineering problems. Mechanical engineers rely on these ideas in almost every problem they encounter, whether they're designing, testing, or building airplanes, cars, robots, smartphones, or medical devices. All of these ideas apply whether you're analyzing a structure, mechanism, or fluid or thermal system. After watching this video, you'll be able to identify what governs any mechanical engineering problem and approach its solution correctly. The first idea is balance laws. Every mechanical system has quantities that cannot disappear and must satisfy balance laws. For any system you analyze or design, what goes in, what comes out, and what accumulates must be consistent. In many cases, this reduces to conservation, but the most general requirement is balance. Forces and moments must balance so a structure does not accelerate unexpectedly. Mass must balance so flow rates are consistent, and energy must balance so temperatures and power levels make sense. If these balances do not close closed designs cannot work in the real world. When you design a structure, force and moment balances tell you how loads flow through the system and which components must carry them. This directly influences member sizing, joint design, and overall layout. Before detailed stress calculations, balance already tells you whether the concept is viable. When you design a heat sink, an energy balance tells you whether the system can reject heat fast enough to maintain temperature. Before modeling conduction paths or convection coefficients, efficiency in detail, the balance tells you whether the design is even feasible. When you design a jet engine or pumping system, mass, momentum, and energy balances determine thrust, pressure rise, flow rate, and require shaft power. You cannot choose compressor stages, pipe diameters, or pumps without satisfying these balances first. Across these examples, the problem context differs, but the role of balance laws stays the same. Balance laws establish feasibility. Now, balance equations alone are not enough. They tell you what must be conserved, but not how a system responds. That response is defined by constitutive relationships. A constitutive relationship describes how a material or system responds to loads, deformation, temperature, or flow. Stress drain laws, viscosity models, friction models, and fatigue curves are all constitutive relationships. Every mechanical engineering analysis closes the balance equations with constitutive assumptions. Linear elasticity, plasticity, and compressible flow ideal gas behavior and lump thermal capacitance are not laws of nature, but rather modeling choices. For example, consider this metal bracket carrying load. The force balance tells us the internal stresses must support the applied load, but it does not tell us how much the bracket will deform or whether it will yield. That depends on whether you model the material as linearly elastic, elastic plastic, or viscoelastic. Two engineers can write the same force balance and reach different conclusions because they chose different constitutive models. The same thing happens in fluids. A momentum balance applies to both laminar and turbulent flow, but the predicted pressure drop depends entirely on how viscosity and turbulence are modeled. And heat transfer, the energy balance is the same whether cooling is natural or forced convection, but the heat transfer coefficient determines the actual temperature rise. Understanding constitutive behavior lets you choose the right level of fidelity. It's important to know when linear elasticity is sufficient, when plastic deformation must be considered, when flow must be treated as laminar, and when turbulence dominates. The third idea is degrees of freedom and constraints. Every mechanical system has a finite number of independent ways it can move, deform, or change state. These are known as its degrees of freedom. Constraints limit these possibilities. In mechanisms, degrees of freedom are set by joints, linkages, and kinematic loops. A mechanism with two many degrees of freedom cannot be controlled. One with too few constraints cannot move as intended. In structures, degrees of freedom are constrained by supports and boundary conditions. In thermal systems, constraints are imposed as temperatures, heat fluxes, or insulation boundaries. These determine whether a system reaches steady state or experiences runaway heating. In fluid systems, constraints are set by geometry, inlet conditions, and pressure boundaries. These define flow paths and strongly affect pressure 
pressure losses and stability. Many mechanical failures occur not because the balance equations were wrong, but because the constraints were misunderstood. Identifying degrees of freedom early tells you if a system is stable, controllable, and physically realizable. The fourth idea is trade-offs and optimization under constraints. Mechanical engineering is never about maximizing a single variable. Every design exists within competing constraints. Weight, cost, size, strength, stiffness, efficiency, reliability, schedule, and risk. Improving one metric almost always degrades another. Increasing stiffness increases mass. Reducing mass increases stress and fatigue risk. Improving efficiency may increase cost, complexity, or development time. In industry, these trade-offs are often shaped as much by company goals as by physics. Consider the design of a cooling system for an electric vehicle battery pack. The thermal team wants maximum heat rejection. Manufacturing wants fewer parts and a simpler assembly. Purchasing wants lower cost materials. Reliability wants conservative operating temperatures. Marketing wants reduced weight to increase vehicle range. All of these goals conflict. The mechanical engineer's job is not to optimize one metric in isolation. It's to identify which constraints are active and which trade-offs dominate. If cost is fixed, weight becomes negotiable. If reliability targets are strict, performance may be limited. Optimization in mechanical engineering rarely means solving a formal mathematical optimization problem, but rather identifying the controlling constraints early and making informed compromises around it. Experienced engineers quickly recognize where additional effort will improve the design and where it will not. Now, before we continue, with the new year coming up, it's the perfect time for us to start building healthy habits and level up. One of my favorite platforms that has really helped me develop my math and science fundamentals and become a much stronger problem solver was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you excel in math, physics, computer science, and data analysis with visual interactive problem solving and personalized practice. Brilliant is highly effective because you learn through active problem solving, a method proven to be far more powerful than watching lectures or videos. It has a perfect mix of interactive problems and motivating challenges and encourages you to keep making progress. Brilliant Brilliant starts you at the right level based on your background, designs practice sets and reviews personalized for you, and helps you advance at your ideal pace. Brilliant is crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Harvard, Stanford, Caltech, Google, and more, so you learn from the best. With Brilliant, you don't just memorize formulas. You get hands-on with concepts until they make sense and develop their intuition and problem-solving skills to figure things out on your own. One of my favorites is Brilliant Scientific Thinking course that teaches you how to think like an engineer with lessons on gear systems, digital circuits, physical structures, and more. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild, scan the QR code on screen, or click on the link in the description below. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. The fifth idea is limits and failure modes. Every mechanical system operates within limits. Yielding, fatigue, buckling, wear, creep, overheating, fracture, and instability define the boundaries of acceptable operation. An experienced mechanical engineer understands which failure mode governs the design and ensures adequate margin relative to that limit. A component may be strong enough in static loading but fail in fatigue. A structure may meet stress limits but buckle. A thermal system may perform well initially but degrade due to overheating over time. And real systems tolerances are part of these limits. A design that works analytically but fails when tolerances stack up is not robust. Clearances, misalignment, surface finish, and dimensional variation directly affect stress, wear, vibration, and thermal performance. Understanding limits informs safety factors, inspection intervals, material selection, and operating envelopes. Limits determine whether a design is acceptable robust and reliable. Now, I'll close by saying most mechanical engineering problems are not difficult because they're complex. They're difficult because it's unclear what governs them. Once the balances, assumptions, constraints, trade-offs, and limits are identified, the path forward is usually pretty clear. That is the common structure underlying most mechanical engineering work. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching.
watching. Happy holidays to all of you celebrating Christmas. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I share several issues that I have with mechanical engineering and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.